Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's 2-Minute Tech. Today we're going to give you an overview of endpoint policy in Sophos Central. Hi. Sophos has added some new features and functionality to the cloud-based console known as the Sophos Central Admin Console. Let's see what the full endpoint policy brings to our security posture. So let's start out by going into our policy for our endpoints. We only have one policy here, it's our base policy. You might have more. But within the policy here, you can see the policy details on the left side here. We're gonna step through those and look at those briefly to see what they bring, bring us in terms of protections. And so um, as we come down the list here, you can see not much has changed. Uh, without threat protection, we could use the recommended settings or we could customize them by unchecking. So let's just stick with the use recommended settings for now. And uh, let's step through these real quick. So we have our live protection that hasn't changed. Real-time scanning for the local files, network shares, as well as internet. Uh, not much has changed there as well. Uh, we do get questions on this uh, low reputation, oh, sorry, low reputation downloads. The low reputation downloads is essentially a uh, means by which Sophos could um, apply reputation scores to files that are being downloaded through our browsers uh, that do have an endpoint agent on them. And um, they get graded, if you will, uh, based on prevalence of the file, age, and URL source of those files. So as an example, if those files are coming from suspicious or malicious domains, uh, they're going to have a very low reputation. They're classified in three levels, low, medium, and high. And so we're going to be warned of the low reputation files here with the setting. And uh, the user will be prompted. And um, if we wanted to see both low and medium, we would change this reputation level to what they call strict. And then strict will give us the uh, prompting uh, based on whether it's low or medium. Uh, let's see here. So as we step down here, we got a new feature here. So this remediation feature here, we, we call enable threat analysis. So enable threat analysis detects malware infection and upon so it creates a threat analysis case, which then sends it on to Sofo Central for reporting. And um, it allows us, the, uh, um, the report allows us to investigate the chain of events that led up to the infection. And it'll provide us with such information as uh, th the threat that was detected, the uh, computer name, and the user that was logged in at the time, the detection date and time, and then the source of that threat along with the suggestion to improve our security posture to prevent that from occurring again in the future. This is, a, this is where it would be populated. Uh, as you can see, I don't have anything here to show you, but uh, this is where you could see a running tab or running report of any threat analysis cases. And then of course, uh, once you're done, you can close those out or submit them to Sophos for further uh, examination. Let's go back to our base policy again. And uh, as we step through here, we come down the list here, we can see that uh, there are additional protections in the runtime department. Uh, we have the uh, mitigate exploits and vulnerable applications. So uh, these are the most prone applications that are vulnerable to exploits. And Sophos has provided some additional layers of protection uh, in the event that these are not patched or up to date. But we always remind our users to keep things patched and up to date, very important. Ask us how if you don't know how. Uh, we also have protection against uh, hijacking of the processes uh, or even of DLLs. So uh, some, good, some good stuff there uh, helps us with our posture at the endpoints and it takes a lot of the decision making away from the end users and uh, it puts it right into the program itself which, which is designed to increase our posture. Um, and we still have our, we do have our command and control detection uh, still and malicious behavior, the HIPS uh, functionality. So that hasn't left us. We still have our schedule scanning, which we encourage you to do at least once a week uh, out of production. And then you can make scanning exclusions and this is policy related. If you wish to make global exclusions, there is a separate area to do that. So let's step into our peripheral control area here. This is enabled by default, uh, however, nothing is blocked. 
Uh, it's enabled by default. It cannot be disabled because it is the base policy. If you create a new policy, then you can disable at will. So this gives us control over uh, any peripherals that are attached to those endpoints, um, such as removable media, which is probably the most common thing we're trying to control. Uh, this allows us to block, allow, or even just put a read-only attribute uh, on that removable media. And then we can make uh, peripheral exemptions here. So if there's particular flash drives or, or uh, SAS drives that you wish to use in an environment, you can whitelist those. Uh, we move down here to our application control. This is a very popular functionality these days. Um, essentially, this is also enabled by default in the base policy, cannot be disabled. There again, nothing's blocked. So here we're going to be detecting and blocking apps that are not a security threat, but you decide are unsuitable for use in the office. As an example, um, we talk about uh, toolbars. Toolbars are a way to attract uh, voluminous amounts of spam. And it, because the increase of spam gives us more opportunities to click on links, uh, the clickbait factor goes way up. Uh, where we get these infected links and attachments that allow users to select things they shouldn't. And um, not intentionally, of course, uh, everything is socially engineered to work around uh, those things. But um, we want to block toolbars in general, so here's a way of doing it. Um, click on the toolbar. You can see there's 81 of them that have been defined by Sophos. As more are defined, they get added to this database. We're going to select them all. You can Hop, you can, however, you can select independent ones at will. And then anything new they add to this list will automatically get checked as well. So we don't have to continuously come back. So now that we've identified um, the applications, what are we going to do with detection? So uh, when they are detected uh, in real time, um, we're going to go ahead and block them. So that's how you block them. Now, if you want to detect them during a scan, then you can come here and enable this feature. And now, I'm going to be able to see a report of these applications, where they're located, where they're installed, so that I can go and uninstall them. Uh, if you have an application uh, that you don't see in that list and you wish to have have it added to the database, uh, here's a form that you can fill out and Sophos will uh, review and uh, reply accordingly. Let's talk about web control. So web control is not web filtering per se, it does give you some sort of web control, though, uh, in a big way. You could do a lot of things in a little bit amount of time and give yourself a good increased posture. If you don't have a web filter yet, this would be like a, a good first step. However, there's additional stuff here that allows you to be a lot more protected than you think you are. So this, as an example, we talk about uh, uh, advertisements and categorized sites, risky downloads. Uh, so this feature here allows me to just either allow it or block it altogether, or I can even warn on it as well. So there's some control right there. Uh, the acceptable web usage. Now, this is a very uh, interesting um, function here. So essentially what Sophos has done here is taken the top 48 defined web filtering categories, and they've grouped them into these five behavioral groups, as you can see here. So within these five groups are going to be URLs. Uh, that fit that behavioral model. So as you can see, productivity-related categories consist of these URL categories. So if you were in a full-blown web filter, you would see these categories where you can allow a block. Now, if I want to go in here and I want to, uh, I want to block any one of these, I can do that. Uh, but as you can see, um, I have to come first, say, let me specify, and then now I have control over what I want to do independently. But again, what I encourage people to do with these policies is to go in, um, pick pick a, a behavior group that agrees with your your company, uh, your organization's philosophical stand uh, for doing business on the internet, and go ahead and just enable the defaults. This is going to give you a quick uh, increased security posture. Once you have everybody with a full deployed agent. Now we come back and we can do some customization here and allow maybe specific departments or groups of users to have additional privileges that uh, would not apply to everybody else. So again, turn it on real quick, um, get going, 
get it deployed, everyone's protected. Now I can come back and fine tune. And as we come down the list here, you can see there's additional features like uh, there is some light form of DLP, if you will, right here. Um, also, I can log these web control events. So any attempts to block sites that we may be blocking here uh, will come through on the reports. Do with that what you will. Uh, control sites tagged in website management. Uh, here is a way to take uh, white lists and um, create tags for them, and then essentially create a policy that uh, in our web control policy, we're allowing all tagged websites. So it's a way to do it in a whitelisting mode where I'm going to allow uh, a specific group of URLs to the exclusion of everything else, which is the opposite of blacklisting, of course. So there you have it. Um, there is a lot there. There's a lot of protection, and there's a way to increase your security posture. And this is how Self Essential protects your endpoints in production, as well as provides your organization with the security posture of your choosing. No compromise, no frills. This is it, the Sophos way. Thanks, and have a good day, everybody. Thank you for coming to Productive Corporation's Two Minute Tech. If you need additional product information, configuration, or implementation services, please contact us at help at productivecorp.com, 800-726-4099. We are here to help.